I call her. She jumps at the opportunity, not just to change her life physically, but to get some quality time with me, because we had lost so much. What I didn't know is that the joke would ultimately be on me on day one of Biggest Loser. Because we weren't just on like Biggest Loser Couples Edition, we were on Biggest Loser Family Edition. It was, it was parents and children against husbands and wives. Everybody there had their buddy, had their loved one, had someone they trusted probably more than anybody else in the world standing by their side. And I looked over in my corner, and there stood my mother. What I believed to be the source of my pain, I brought her with me to this crazy place. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. So they probably are not going to want to be my friends. And so my mom and I are probably going to have to spend a lot of time together. A lot of time together. You share a room. You wear matching outfits. I mean, that's a lot of time together. And it worked for a while. I thought, I can do what I've always done. Maybe not the food part, because there is the Jillian factor. But I can smile my way through this. I'll fly under the radar. My mom and I, we don't ruffle any feathers. We could just coast through this. And really, truly, our goal was just to make it to the makeover show and get our hair done. We were like, we can do this. We were excited. And what I didn't bargain for was week four. We had a water tank challenge. And it was for letters from home, which I so desperately wanted. I wanted to hear from my dad and my other siblings and my friends. I wanted a connection to the outside world. I wanted to escape the reality of The Biggest Loser because it is physically and emotionally exhausting. Especially if you're trying to just smile your way through it while crying on a treadmill and being punched in the face by a screaming woman. I mean, it is really <laughs> difficult to get in. And I would go on and, and look at the challenge and say, I will, I'm going to win this thing. I'm going to win it for my mail. And we get in there, and it's you're standing on a metal bar attached to some chains, and above you is another metal bar, and you're in up to about here with water. And slowly they're going to drain the water out of this tank, making it increasingly more difficult to hang on. So as soon as the challenge started, I thought, I just don't want to be the first one out, because it was tough. It didn't look that tough when I was saying I'm going to win this thing, but now it was tough. And what I didn't know is that my bar was also not level. It was kind of slanted a little bit, so I was kind of leaning, and I could just feel, you know, my feet sliding a bit, and, you know, your pinky toe goes numb, and we've all worn heels. It's not fun. You, you know once you reach that point, you're just done. Your feet are done. And I finally, you know, watched a few people go out, and I'm like, oh, good, I just won't be the first person out, and I'll just sneak away out of this tank. So I sat down on my bar and I kind of motioned to the camera guy, I'm done, I'm out of here. Well, I kind of had this fear of swimming. And we were in this tank. Mind you, there's 70 people around. Safest place in the world to be. But I went under the water. And I all I'm thinking is, oh no, Michelle, you got to get back up to the top because you have a helmet on your head. It's going to fill with water and you're going to drown in front of 70 people <laughs> on TV. So I'm like, I'm in a panic. I swim to the top, and that bar that I was sitting on that was a little bit slanted, that was covered in foam, now had about a one-inch gap exposing some metal. And so as I kicked up and swam up in a fury, that bar that I was sitting on had swung out. And as I popped out of that water, that bar swung back, and it hit me in my face. And it chipped my tooth. I lost it. I started crying. I started just panicking. And everybody's looking at me going, it's not that bad. And I'm like, you've chipped my tooth. And I just started to break down. Because it was my one thing protecting me from every pain I was feeling. It was my shield to the world. And they broke it. You know, is that enough that I'm being yelled at, I'm sweaty, I'm gross, it's dirty, and I'm thinking, now you've chipped my tooth. And it was the one-time Access Hollywood wanted an interview, and I'm just like, you have got to be kidding me. And they're all like, Michelle, we will get you in the dentist chair, don't sue us. We will get you in the dentist chair, don't sue us. But the damage was done. They saw the pain instantly, and nobody understood it. Nobody understood that I had been hiding my pain behind that smile. 
that I had been smiling my way through this relationship with my mom. And so I did the only thing I knew to do. Because, you know, I don't know if my mom had a tooth chip moment. But I know that when things got tough, my mom left. And so I looked my mother in the eye and said, I quit. I'm leaving the show. She didn't really have the words to say to, to make me stay in that moment, only to say, give it some time. Whatever you decide I'll, is okay with me. I kind of wanted her to fight. But she was just okay to say, well, whatever you want. And I was so sure I was ready to go that I looked my mother in the eye and I said, you, please go tell Jillian. I don't want to do it. I am so sure I'm ready to go. You go do it. And you know, it's so interesting. When Jillian Michaels came in that day, I was hiding in the bathroom and my mom was telling her in the kitchen. All I could think of is, I know what she's going to do. Because all those toxic relationships I had created, I know how they ended. I know that Jillian's probably going to grab me by the back of my shirt and throw me out of here and tell me just to leave. But she didn't. She sat on the floor and we talked. She said, Michelle, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what has happened that has caused you to want to leave, but don't you see that it is working for you to be here? You need to be here. And I'm looking at her going, I don't want to be here. I want to leave. But Jillian said, whatever you decide, I'm right here with you. Jillian would go on to spend a week trying to get me to stay. Trying everything. Not giving up on me. Just one little contestant. And I, I don't even have the words to tell you what it meant to me to know that she was different. To know that women could respond differently than my mom had responded when things got tough. Jillian would go on to keep her word in many different situations. Half the time while I was screaming and yelling at me, but she kept her word. She showed me what it was to have a healthy relationship. She helped me along the way to trust my mother. She helped me know that not all women will leave when things are tough. She kind of was like a surgeon in there, slowly going in and saying, what can we work on? For me, the biggest loser wasn't just about losing weight. That was the least of my concerns. It was about rebuilding a relationship with my mom. And ultimately about developing a new relationship with women in general. So that I could stand in a room full of all of you and be so welcomed. And not afraid. I know it sounds crazy. But I feel welcomed. I fearlessly attack relationships now, friendships, working relationships, because I know that given the hard work, those will pay off. Because we are more alike than we are different. The more I tell my story, the more I explain to people those sad, dark days, the more people say, I know what you're going through. I've been there. I've had those same thoughts. And here all this time, I thought I was the only one. If you've ever thought something and thought, I'm the only one who's ever thought this, no. I guarantee you, whether it's a woman at your table or a woman in this room, there are other people out there that make us more alike than we are different. And I want to encourage all of you that as you go and as you become these breakthrough type women, that you fearlessly attack life out there and that you don't give up. Because you can become the biggest loser of whatever is holding you back. And you can live a fearless life. You know, I titled my book Becoming Fearless. Because I wanted people to know that it is a journey. And there is nothing about it that is normal. But that you and I, we can be on a journey and it can be fearless. And that we can get to the other side. We can become the biggest loser, although it's not glamorous, of whatever is holding us back in life. Thank you.